So who is the best wide receiver in this year's draft? It seemed like it was Marvin Harrison Jr. for a while, but might not be the case. Does Malik Neighbors or Mudunze have a case? Or even maybe Brock Bowers? Just kidding. Let's take a deeper look and see who should go first and who should subscribe to the channel and like the video. As you can see by my current sub count, I'm about 96 subscribers away from getting monetized. So if you want to help me buy like a pizza slice every now and then with my YouTube ad money, consider subscribing. First up, let's talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. So coming into the season, MHJ was a basically presumptive first receiver off the board. And he still is for the most part. But funny enough, he was only a four-star recruit coming out of high school. Which is shocking considering, you know, he is the son of a Hall of Famer. Albeit one with a rap sheet. But still, the Nasers definitely got it wrong seeing as how great of a career he had at Ohio State. For one, he had 31 touchdowns in 29 games. To some, he disappointed this year, but he technically had more yards and the same amount of touchdowns. And oddly enough, last year, everyone was doubting Stroud because he had great players like Marvin Harrison. But now it seems almost like people are wondering if Harrison is as good because he didn't perform as well with his other QB, Kyle McCord. Though watching the tape, it looks like he's recovering pretty well on under throws and doing his best to make that QB look good. Also, some have begun questioning his yak ability, but I think it's just kind of odd. First off, he's not even bad at yak. He's just not that explosive. And most important of all, though, his best part of his game is that he's a really sound route runner, which is hard to come by when you're a 6'3 guy. I think all in all, the knocks that he's getting are just another example of how the draft process is just way too long. Though for as good of a prospect as he is, he's still not the slam dunk number one. And in fact, NFL.com doesn't have him as a first rank receiver. Who's their number one? Malik Neighbors. He's not only their number one receiver, he's their number one prospect overall. They have him ahead of Harrison, who's second, and Caleb Williams, who's third. That's high praise for a guy who's not the consensus number one receiver coming into this draft. But it makes sense in a way. At six feet and 200 pounds, he ran a sub 4 4 at his pro day. So he's got the combination of a strong frame with explosive play potential. It's an important distinction to make when talking about neighbors. He's not just some speed guy. He's a guy who can handle the rigors of the NFL. People don't get too excited when they hear the DJ Moore comparisons, but they're pretty apt considering how similar their body types are and questions surrounding whether or not they can be pure outside guys. At LSU, neighbors mostly played in the slot, so it's hard to tell really what he can do in that area of the field. And regardless, he might not have the kind of profile that you want catching balls down the sideline. But regardless, in the direction the NFL seems to be moving, these sort of slot guys don't have a problem adjusting the NFL. That's largely thanks to the game being a little less physical between the numbers. But still, in a way, that makes Malik Neighbors at least a guy who probably requires the right system fit. Not every system likes to feature a slot in the same way. And there's just not a lot of evidence to see how he would work in an outside role. That's not to say that he still can't develop in that regard, but we just don't know yet. Regardless, I think Malik Neighbors is the most exciting prospect in this draft. But he's also the most likely bust out of these three guys. But even more regardless, I don't think that his bust probability should scare teams off because if he hits, he's another Jamar Chase or Odell Beckham. The guy who some people think might be the least likely to bust is Robo Dunze. He's largely considered the third best wide receiver prospect, but he has his fans. And technically speaking, has the same ranking as Caleb Williams, according to NFL.com. So what makes him the obvious number three? Because he just put up crazy stats this year, 1,600 yards and 13 TDs. He did that while having two other wide receivers on his team who will get drafted in the NFL and Jalen McMillan and Jalen Polk. And his measurables are good too. He's 6'3", 212 pounds, ran a 4.45, opted out of his pro day because, you know, he could have easily padded that number two if he wanted to. And if you watch him, he's got some wiggle to his game. He's not just some tall guy. He's almost sort of like a, a bigger Amari Cooper. And he has some yak ability too. He also improved a lot when it came to the 50-50 balls this year. He's a willing blocker, plays through injuries, team leader. What's not to like? I think maybe it's because he's just not eye-popping in any way. Like a jack of all trades. You don't necessarily have to be a master of any one thing as a receiver. Because as long as you're good at a lot of things, you'll have good production. If anything, it's easier to get on the field, right? If you're just a jump ball guy, you're only going to get in those sort of situations. 
Though Roman Dunsey is not without his fans. Matt Harmon for reception perception has given him a perfect route tree, something that a guy like Devontae Adams gets. That's pretty high praise for a guy who's basically most people's third best receiver in his draft. But that's the thing with this year's draft. Roman Dunsey probably would have been first off the board in the last few drafts. And I genuinely believe there are some teams that would take him first this year. So that begs the question, who is the best receiver overall in this draft? And obviously the cop-out would be to say that all of them are good and it just depends what a team looks for in a guy. And that's who they'll take. But I'm not going to do that. I think Marvin Harrison is pretty obviously the number one guy. And Malik Neighbors and Aroma Dunze are 2A and 2B. I think the pedigree can't be understated when it comes to Marvin Harrison. He has such a leg up over so many guys having been around the NFL for so long and been learning from day one. He's going to be able to really adjust the NFL really easily. And I think the point of this entire exercise is to say that if you end up being one of these teams who gets one of these guys, you know, like a team like the Chargers, you're going to do fine. If any of these three guys bust, it'll be not a lack of talent, but really situation slash whether or not they have their heads screwed on straight. A receiver, even if they're the best, you know, they still need a coordinator or a quarterback who wants to get in the ball. And as long as they have that, I think these guys will do fine. And I think waiting around to select a receiver later on this draft, even though there's a lot of good ones, is a little risky because they bring with them a lot more question marks. Though all those could be addressed by liking and subscribing. Thanks again for watching.